We have discussed amorphous and nanocrystalline silicon as well as the various silicon alloys. In this section, we will discuss the major challenges associated with using these materials in a thin film solar cell. We will start this section off with the stabler ronsky effect. In this video, we will learn what the stabler ronsky effect is and how exactly it affects the performance of a solar cell. We will look into the origin of the stabler ronsky effect. The stabler ronsky effect influences the performance of amorphous silicon and silicon alloys containing amorphous tissue. The effect involves the degradation of amorphous silicon under the influence of light. Light-induced degradation was discovered by Stabler and Wronski one year after the first amorphous silicon solar cells were made and is one of the biggest challenges for the thin film solar cells. Because of the recombination of light-excited charge carriers, metastable defects are created in the absorber layers. The increased defect density leads to increased charge carrier recombination in the absorber, which degrades the performance of the cell. Let's look at the performance of an amorphous silicon solar cell. This figure shows a JV curve detailing the initial performance of such a solar cell. After about a thousand hours of illumination, the efficiency of the cell stabilizes. We now introduce the stabilized efficiency of the same cell. We can see that the open circuit voltage is not significantly affected. The short circuit current density, on the other hand, decreases due to the reduced charge carrier collection. The fill factor suffers most from the light-induced degradation, since the increased defect density in the bulk increases the series resistance of the solar cell. The stabilite efficiency is generally about 85 to 90 percent of the initial efficiency. But how exactly does the fill factor degrade during this thousand-hour period? The simple thin film solar cells shown on the right with amorphous silicon absorber layer is exposed to light under the standard test condition. These are, as you may recall, one sun illumination and the AM 1.5 spectrum and a cell temperature of 25 degrees. Note that the amorphous silicon of this solar cell does not correspond to the state-of-the-art material. The fill factor of this cell after deposition is about 74%. Upon exposure to light, the fill factor strongly decreases. We can discern two regions in this graph. The first and ours is where the strongest degradation occurs, since the fill factor is decreased from its initial 74% to about 60%. We can therefore call this the fast region. From 10 hours onwards, the cell degrades further, but at a reduced degradation rate. In this slow region, the fill factor decreases an additional 9% absolute to achieve a stabilized fill factor of about 51%. An interesting thing happens when the stabilized cell is subjected to a step of thermal annealing. As you can see, the performance loss of the cell can be reversed to a certain degree when thermally annealed. After 120 degrees Celsius, after a period of 30 minutes, the fill factor has been increased from 51% to about 62%. After higher annealing temperatures, yet more of the light-induced degradation is reversed, up to 97% of the initial fill factor. Unfortunately, after annealing the cell, will once more degrade when exposed to light. So what does this mean for the performance of some multi-junction devices containing amorphous silicon absorber layers? Shown here are a micromorph tandem cell and a triple junction solar cell with an amorphous silicon PIN junction on top of two nanocrystalline silicon PIN junctions. The initial efficiency of the tandem cell is about 14%, while the initial efficiency of the triple junction cell is about 15.4%. In both devices, the amorphous silicon junction has a large share in the total power output. In a tandem cell, the amorphous silicon junction is responsible for about two-thirds of the total power output, while the triple junction device, the amorphous junction accounts for about half of the output. It is therefore no surprise that as the amorphous silicon layer degrades, the performance of the device suffers. 
Consequently, consequently, the micromore of the vice has a stabilized efficiency of about 12.5%, while the triple junction cell has a stabilized efficiency of 13.4%. So far we have looked at the effect of light induced degradation on the performance of amorphous silicon solar cells. In the next video we will continue our discussion of the stable Ronsky effect by looking into its origin.